What's up, ladies and gentlemen? In this video, what I wanna do is handle four tips that I know can help you solve quadratic equations. Let's go and break down these four tips and hopefully you can take away something from this video to help you out. So tip number one is look for and use your inverse operations. Now I want you to see in these two equations that I have one variable X. And this, for the record, is the only time that you are going to be using your inverse operations for a quadratic equation. In this first example, I have X squared. That's it. In this example, I have the quantity X plus two squared. But again, there's only one X and it's being squared. So when you only have one X, you can use your inverse operations. Any other time, please do not make that mistake because you will get the problem wrong. But when you do only have one X, the best thing I can offer to you is use your inverse operations. And again, what are the inverse operations? They're just undoing what property is happening to your variable. So like in this example, we are multiplying by one fourth and we're subtracting by five. So when you're solving using inverse operations, you always undo addition and subtraction first, then you undo a multiplication and division. Okay, so now you can see to undo subtraction, I just added a five to both sides. To undo multiplication, I divided by one fourth. But remember, dividing by a fraction is the same thing as multiplying by a reciprocal. So that's why I got x squared equals 24. Now the main important thing, you got to make sure to undo squaring that you use the inverse operation, which is going to be the square root. But notice we are introducing the square root. So therefore, we need to make sure that we have two answers here. X is going to equal a plus or minus the square root of 24, which in this case, we could also go ahead and simplify that to a plus or minus two square root of six. All right, now in this example, you can see there's a lot of inverse operations going on, right? I'm adding a three, I'm multiplying by an of two, but then inside the parentheses, I'm adding by two. Well, the main thing we want to do is we want to isolate the x squared, right? Just like we did here, we isolated x squared before we took the square root. That's the same thing over here. You're going to want to subtract the three on both sides first and then divide by negative two before we get into undoing the squaring. Now, in this case, we cannot subtract the two, right? Because this two is inside this parentheses that quantity is being squared. So therefore, I need to uh, take the square root of both sides and that's going to leave me now with an x plus two equals now the square root of a negative number, which again, remember that's going to bring us into our imaginary unit system. So therefore, it's going to be i square root of of two, and then we could subtract the two on both sides. But again, remember from the last problem, make sure whenever you introduce the square root, you're going to have plus or minus. So that our final answer is going to be negative two plus or minus an i square root of two. So always look for when you have one single x, either it's just an x squared or you have a quantity squared, then go ahead and apply your, your inverse operations. But again, don't forget the plus or minus. That's a big one. Tip number two is to look for your special factoring techniques, such as the difference of two squares or perfect square trinomials. So you can see in these two examples, we have a coefficient of four in front of the x squared. And I think when a lot of students, they're trying to factor, once they see a number in front of x, they're like, uh-uh, I'm not gonna do that. Let me go ahead and do quadratic formula but I don't want you to do that. I want you to look for your special factoring techniques. All you need to do to look for them is look at the first term and the last term. First term and last term. And if that first term and last term are square numbers, like four, nine, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, 100, dot, 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 then it's possible that you can either factor them by the difference of two squares or as a binomial squared. Now, in this first example, you have a square term minus another square term. So therefore, guess what? That is always going to be factored into the difference of two squares. When you have a square term minus another square term, you don't need to apply the quadratic formula. You don't need to use the inverse operations, although the last tip would be pretty helpful here. You can go ahead and factor this as a a minus B times an A plus B. Now, the only issue sometimes is how do I identify what my A is going to be and my B? But again, you can just simply just go ahead and write an equation here. If you say A squared then is going to be a 4X squared and B squared is equal to 25, you can easily go ahead and find your A and your B. Just go ahead and take the square root. Now, again, you don't need to actually introduce the square root here because you're only going to have this option. But in this case, your A would be a 2X and when you take the square root in this case, your B is going to equal a five. And again, it's always going to be A minus B, A plus B. So don't worry about that plus or minus. That's already, actually already kind of taken care of in this situation. But therefore, now I can go ahead and rewrite this as a 2X minus five times a 2X plus five. And guess what? The cool thing is you can always go and check your work by multiplying it back out, right? And you can see here that my middle term is going to add to zero. That's why we don't have a middle linear term here. But now you have a product equal to zero. You can go ahead and apply the zero product property, which basically means you can set both of these equal to zero to go ahead and solve and therefore add the five divided by two x is equal to a five halves and subtract a five divided by two x is equal to a negative five halves, which guess what? Remember the last example where we took the square root and I said, make sure you do the plus or minus. Well, this is why last one we did. I just told you to do the plus or minus, but here you can see we have x equals a plus or minus five halves. Both of those solutions exist. So it's very important to make sure we don't forget that plus or minus. All right. Now in this next example, it's a little bit more difficult to identify, but again, you want to look for the middle first term being square number, which again it is. Therefore, when you have that case, what you need to do is look at the middle term. And if you have an a squared, right? And you have a B squared, then if it is a perfect square trinomial, then the middle term is going to be two times a 
times b. So let's go and check this out. So if I have an a squared is equal to a 4x squared and a b squared is equal to a 9, well, we already said a was a 2x, right? And b is equal to a 3. So does 2 times a 2x times 3, does that equal a 12x? And guess what? It does. So therefore, we can rewrite this in the factor form as a a plus b quantity squared. Well, again, since my a is going to be a 2x, that's going to be a 2x plus b, which is a 3, quantity squared. Now again, what if my middle term was negative? It'd be the exact same thing, guys. If you did have a negative term, a squared minus a two a b plus a b squared is just going to simply be a a minus b quantity squared. But again, my main point with this tip is don't just jump to quadratic formula. Don't jump to completing the square. Look for those special factoring techniques. I know factoring can sometimes be very difficult and kind of overwhelming, but when you look at these special factoring techniques, it can make your life a whole lot easier. Tip number three is use the discriminant to your advantage. So in these three examples, you can see they're very similar, but just a little bit different. But that little difference can make a huge difference into the type of solutions that you're going to be solving for when you're looking at a quadratic equation. Now remember, a quadratic equation can have one, two, or no solutions. And the quickest, fastest, easiest way to be able to understand that or look for that is to go ahead and identify the discriminant, which is your e squared minus four times a times c. Now remember, the discriminant is what is under the square root when you're doing the quadratic formula. So even though I don't recommend that you immediately go always directly into this quadratic formula, a lot of time when you want to kind of understand what solutions you're going to be looking for, or maybe you want to verify that you did something correct, go ahead and check the discriminant to make sure your solutions are going to match up. Or if you know if something's going to be factorable across rational numbers or not. So to really do this, you just need to make sure all of your equations are set equal to zero and they're in standard form AX squared plus BX plus C. And now all we're simply going to do is go ahead and plug those values into B squared minus four times A times C. And it doesn't really matter if B is going to be a negative or a positive because you're going to square it anyways. But either way, we have a B squared minus a four. A in this case is going to be a one. So that's going to be times a one times a 12. Okay. Now four times 12 is going to be 48 and negative seven squared is going to be 49. So 49 minus a 48 is going to equal a one. Whenever you have a square number as a discriminant, that tells you you're going to have two real rational solutions for your quadratic, meaning that this is more than likely going to be factorable. So you could obviously do the quadratic formula, but if you probably look at this, you could see which two factors multiply to give you a positive 12, but add to give you negative seven, and that'd be a negative three and negative four. Meaning I could rewrite this in factor form as a X minus three times an X minus four equals zero, and then go ahead and solve using the zero product property, which X equals three and X is equal to four. Now in this next example, we're going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to take a negative seven quantity squared minus a four times one times 11. Now four times 11 is going to be a 44, right? So this is gonna be a 49 minus a 44. Now in this case though, you can see that that's gonna equal a five. Now five is not a square number. So therefore what I'm gonna have is two real irrational roots, meaning this is probably not gonna be the easiest problem for you to be able to factor. So therefore you can use the discriminant and plug it into the rest of the quadratic formula. Before I got the quadratic formula, just remember the solutions of a quadratic x are gonna to equal to opposite of b plus or minus the square root of the discriminant, b squared minus four times a times c, all over a two a. Okay, now since I already found my discriminant, which is going to be five, now again, remember that's under the square root, I can go ahead and actually plug in my b and my two a to go ahead and find my two other solutions. So therefore it's gonna be x is equal to a opposite of b, so b is negative seven, so therefore it's gonna be a positive seven, plus or minus the square root of my discriminant, which in this case is five, all over a two times a, which in this case is going to be a one. So two times one is just two. So therefore that is going to be my two solutions. Now let's go and take a look at the last example, which you can see is very, very similar. So again, I have my negative seven quantity squared minus a four times a times C. So four times 13 is going to be a 52. So I'm going to have a 49 minus a 52. Now this is very important because 49 times 52 is going to be a negative three, right? And think about it. You have a negative on your discriminant. You know, you can't take the square root of that, right? This is going to give you two complex roots. Again, not something you're going to want to factor. So finishing this with the quadratic formula is probably going to be your best approach. So therefore I can just write this as an X equals opposite of B, which again is seven plus or minus the square root of negative three, all divided by two times a, which in this case, again, is just going to be a two. Now you could simplify the square root of negative three as an i square root of three. So let's just go ahead and write that in there. X is equal to a seven plus or minus a i square root of three over two and you're all set. All right, ladies and gentlemen, and we've made it to the last tip, which is a huge tip. And I cannot tell you how many students make this mistake. 
time and time and time again. Probably one of the most important tips that I want you to take away from this video. When you're solving quadratic equations, except for tip number one, when you only have one X, is to make sure you get all the X's to the same side and get your quadratic equal to zero. And the reason why setting it equal to zero is going to be so important, because if you're going to use factoring, we have to have a product equal to zero, right? Then we can apply the zero product property. If you're going to be using the quadratic formula, you got to have it in standard form, meaning everything needs to be on one side, AX squared plus BX plus C. So therefore you can see in these three examples, don't try to use inverse operations, right? There's more than one X. What you simply want to do is simplify if there is any simplifying to get done and get everything over to the same side. On a problem like this, it's just as easy as subtracting variables on the same side. So X squared minus an 8X is equal to one. And then you can subtract a one. So you have an X squared minus an 8X minus one equals zero. Then hopefully now, since I just showed you how to do the quadratic formula, you can go ahead and finish this problem. In this example, I always like to make my X to be positive. So rather than subtracting a three X squared on both sides, I'm actually going to get an X squared. So I'm actually going to get everything over to the right-hand side. There's no rule. Everything has to be on the left-hand side. Just a lot of times that is always preferred because that's the way that we kind of read our math problems. But again, I always prefer to kind of have my equations to be positive. Again, you can just kind of do things one at a time. So right, 3X squared minus X squared is going to be a 2X squared minus 4X plus one, right? And then now you can go ahead and add your 2X to the other side. And then I get a zero equals a 2X squared. This is going to be minus a 2X plus one. And again, this is something you can check for factoring or move right into the quadratic formula to go ahead and solve. In this last example, I love this one because students get so used to using the zero product property that they immediately just go ahead and set both these factors equal to five. But unfortunately, there's not a property called the five product property. Whenever you have a product equal to number five, what you're going to need to do is we need to simplify this. We need to actually expand this out and then get everything over to the same side. So to expand this out, I'm actually going to have to multiply this using FOIL or just the distributed property. X times X is X squared. X times negative two is a negative two X. One times X is going to be a positive X. And one times negative two is a negative two. And then that's going to equal five. Now I can go ahead and combine my middle terms, right? So an X squared minus X minus two is equal to a five. And then again, remember we want to equal to zero, right? So subtract the five on both sides and you get an X squared minus X minus seven is equal to zero. And then again, we have another equation that you can go ahead and check to see if it's factorable or go ahead and move right into the quadratic formula. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen, four tips that hopefully you now have a better understanding of how to approach as well as solve your quadratic equations. If these tips were helpful, let me know in the comments down below. Or if you have your own tips from your own experience, being as a teacher, a student, or as a parent, let me know down below and I might just have to add them into a new video. But if you're looking for more examples of solving quadratic equations, or you want to go and take a look at the notes and resources I offer inside my courses and go and take a look at the playlist and links that I have for you down below. Otherwise, go ahead and take a look at the next video I created for you here. Cheers.